Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following relationship, which involves the partial derivative of the enthalpy with respect to pressure at constant temperature. And then we are going to use this expression to evaluate this quantity for an ideal gas and then for a non-interacting van der Waals gas. The following identity will be useful for this particular problem. We remind you in detail, and we've taken the liberty of color coding the various variables so you can see more clearly where they occur. We can now make the following assignments. Let's, in place of the function f, let's replace that with the enthalpy h. Similarly, x in our identity will be replaced by the pressure. The variable y is going to represent the entropy s. And the variable z, or z, is going to be our temperature. Now we replace uh, each of the variables f, x, y, and z by the appropriate values in this case, which will be the enthalpy, pressure, entropy, and temperature. So the first term becomes the change in the enthalpy as a function of the pressure at constant temperature, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. So, so far, it looks as if our variable assignments will be helpful. And then we have the change in the enthalpy as a function of the pressure at constant entropy and then we have our product of partial derivatives Again, our function is going to be the enthalpy H. Our Y is going to be the entropy S. Our variable X is the pressure. And then we make the proper assignments. And now we have a legitimate mathematical relationship based upon the identity involving partial derivatives. Now, from one of the Maxwell relations, we know that the change in entropy as a function of pressure at constant temperature is equal to the change in the volume as a function of temperature at constant pressure with a minus sign in front. Now we make this substitution into our expression here, and that gives us that the change in enthalpy as a function of the pressure at constant temperature is equal to the change in H. And then this partial derivative stays the same because we're not substituting it for it. And then we substitute the value that we had gotten from the Maxwell relation. So that gives us a minus sign. And then we have the partial derivative of the volume as a function of temperature at constant pressure. 
In a previous video, we had already shown that the change in enthalpy as a function of the entropy at constant pressure is simply the temperature T. So we can now substitute this expression into our relationship. where in this expression we've shown where the T came from because color coded in blue and we had previously shown where the uh, purple expression had come from. Recall that we had also determined that the change in enthalpy as a function of the pressure at constant entropy is just the volume. So this allows us to rewrite our equation here in the following form. And having made those particular substitutions, we see that we have proven exactly what we wanted to prove. We now want to evaluate this quantity for an ideal or perfect gas. And we see that a key to determining this value is if we can determine the value of this particular partial derivative. So recall that for an ideal gas, which implies that the volume is equal to T over so our next step is to evaluate the change in the volume as a function of temperature. So we take the partial derivative with respect to T of nRT over P, keeping the pressure constant. And we see that this is simply going to be nR divided by the pressure P. And to be clear, this value is equal to the partial derivative of the volume with respect to the temperature at constant pressure for an ideal gas. So now we're at the point where we can evaluate this expression, the change in the enthalpy as a function of pressure at constant temperature, because we need an expression for the volume. So we know the volume of an ideal gas is going to be nRT divided by P minus the temperature times the expression that we had derived for the change in the volume with respect to temperature at constant pressure, which is simply nR over P. And we see that these two terms cancel and we're left with a value of zero. This tells us that if we keep the temperature constant as we change the pressure, the enthalpy will not change at all for an ideal gas. Now let's see what the change in enthalpy with respect to pressure would be for a non-interacting van der Waals gas. So to get the non-interacting form, we start with our standard version of the van der Waals equation and the A divided by V sub M squared part is the part that has to do with intermolecular attractions. So if it's non-interacting, 
We simply set the constant a equal to zero, and we're left with this particular form for the equation of state. To most easily apply our identity to the current situation, we want to derive an expression for the volume. So, since we know that p equals rt divided by v sub m minus b, we can multiply each side of the expression by vm minus b divided by p, which gives us that the left-hand side becomes vm minus b equals rt divided by p. Then we simply have to add b to each side, and we get that the molar volume is equal to r t divided by p plus b. Since the molar volume v sub m is simply the volume v divided by n, the number of moles of gas, we can replace v sub m by v divided by n, and then we multiply each side of the equation by n, which gives us that the volume is equal to n r t divided by p plus n times b for the non-interacting van der Waals gas. For this volume, the change in the volume as a function of temperature at constant pressure is going to be n r over p plus zero, which is just n r over p. We are now ready to apply our identity. So we have that the change in the enthalpy as a function of pressure at constant temperature is equal to the volume, and we worked out that the volume is going to be n r t over p plus n b minus the temperature of t times this particular partial derivative, which we have already worked out as n r over p, so that gives this expression as n r t over p. And we see that our result is n b, which is not equal to zero so long as b is not equal to zero. And we see if b is equal to zero, which would give us an ideal gas, then the change in enthalpy as a function of pressure at constant temperature would be exactly zero, which is in agreement with the result we had just derived. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.